Previously on Moonfaker, we showed that the rocks that NASA claims their astronauts retrieved from the moon have chemical compositions, mineralogies, water concentrations, and oxygen isotope ratios similar, if not identical, to terrestrial basalts. We also found that the glasses found in the Apollo rocks have similar, if not identical, compositions to tektites, which has subsequently led some geologists to believe that tektites are of lunar origin, not terrestrial origin. We also noted that these rocks do contain evidence of solar and cosmic radiation, a characteristic which, while not found in Earth rocks, has been found in meteorites. And as demonstrated by the HED group, meteorites can closely resemble NASA's Apollo samples as far as compositions, mineralogy, and oxygen isotope ratios are concerned. This has led to cases of HED meteorites being mistaken for lunar meteorites and vice versa. This leads us to the conviction that NASA's Apollo samples are in fact a combination of HED meteorites, earth basalts, and tektites. The tektites that were used likely came from Australia, which is the best place where you can find tektites. So where did these meteorites come from? Meteorites have been found all over the globe. A good place to find meteorites is Antarctica. During the researching of my Exhibit D series, I picked up on a passage from Wikipedia, which stated that Werner von Braun visited Antarctica prior to Apollo 11 purely for the purpose of systematically searching the ice surface for meteorites believed to be of lunar origin. Now, I never said that Antarctica was the only place where NASA collected meteorites. I just pointed to this passage as documentation that something was going down at the time. In his videos discussing Antarctica and meteorites, Phil Webb makes many false and libelous statements. After noting that moon rocks give off radiation, and then suggesting that that makes them identical to common meteorites found on Earth, which it doesn't, Jarrah jumps into the conspiracist claim that the chief architect of the American space program, Warner von Braun, went to Antarctica in 1966 to collect meteorites that would later be passed off as moon rocks brought back by the Apollo astronauts. This Von Braun claim quickly circulated the internet shortly after it was introduced in the year 2000 by alleged truth seeker Aaron Rainin in his supposedly critically claimed mockumentary Did We Go? Firstly, Rainin's video was a documentary, not a mockumentary. Throughout his video series, Webb repeatedly poisons the well by labelling Did We Go as a mockumentary. There is a big difference. A documentary is a non-fictional project discussing historical and factual information. A mockumentary, on the other hand, is a satirical work presented in the format of a documentary but openly admitted to as being a work of fiction. Secondly, Rainin's film came out in 2002, not 2000. Thirdly, the Antarctica subject was first brought up in Ralph Renee's book, not Rainin's video. Rainin interviewed Renee for his Did We Go video. It's likely that Renee told him about Antarctica meteorites during the interview. Rainin never quoted Renee on it. But he did confirm with geologist Professor Gerald Wassenberg that meteorites believed to be of lunar origin have been found in Antarctica. I believe Dr. Wasserberg, but I had also heard that you could find moon rocks in Antarctica in the form of meteorites. And I stumbled onto these photographs of Werner von Braun in Antarctica two years before the Apollo 11 mission. I asked the professor, can you get moon rocks in Antarctica? Well, I got a phone call once, a fellow at the Smithsonian, and he said, Jerry, we have now a meteorite which I just brought back from Antarctica, which is uh, from the moon. I said, Brian, that's nonsense. Of course, I said something stronger than that. The whole assembly of scientists attacked this object, and at the end of a year and a half, the conclusion was, it was Uncle Sam. It was a moon rock. There was no question that it was a moon rock. It was unambiguously a moon rock, just as later one could identify pieces of Mars. It seems far-fetched, but it's evidence I can't ignore. Why would Von Braun need to travel to Antarctica? Right at the time, he was allegedly perfecting the Saturn V moon rocket. 
All this doesn't make my job any easier. But my investigation has to move on. The Brian from the Smithsonian, whom Wassenberg is referring to, is probably Brian Mason. The geochemist who, together with petrologist William Melson, uncovered striking similarities in chemical compositions and mineralogy between HED meteorites and Apollo samples. It was Mason who was sent Antarctic meteorite Allen Hills 81005, and he identified it as being a lunar meteorite, but not only its minerals and chemistry were the same as the Apollo samples, but so were the oxygen isotope ratios. Although the mineralogy and bulk chemical compositions of HED meteorites and Apollo samples were almost exactly the same, the one thing that was stopping geologists from outright declaring HED meteorites were lunar meteorites was that they had slightly less oxygen-18 than Apollo samples. But as we saw previously, that rule went straight out the window when HED meteorites like DAG-872 had identical oxygen isotopes to the Apollo samples. Likewise, EET 87521 was originally declared a Eucrite before it was officially declared a lunar meteorite. Continuing with Webb's diatribe... Jera borrows heavily from Raynan's video in his Exhibit D series. On that note, it is worth noting that in 1966, Werner von Braun, the Nazi rocket scientist who built the Saturn V, took an extended trip to Antarctica. Another note worth noting is that he was there for a week. I wouldn't exactly consider that an extended trip. And he was there in January 1967, not 1966. And, of course, Jerry has to start off by tagging von Braun as being a Nazi. After all, everyone knows that all Nazis are liars and meteorite hoarders. Besides, for what other reason than meteorite gathering would a Nazi scientist want to go to Antarctica anyway? First off, whether von Braun was a Nazi or not has nothing to do with moon rocks. Nonetheless, Jared tries to invalidate the entire Apollo space program by discrediting one man's character. This tactic is called poisoning the well. In searching Wikipedia for information on this, one comes across the following. During the local summer of 1966 to 1967, Von Braun participated in a U.S. government expedition to Antarctica. The expedition was one of the first to systematically search the ice surface for meteorites believed to originate from the moon for later use as reference material. This is interesting. If you look at the Werner Von Braun article on Wikipedia today, it doesn't say this. Jera published his Exhibit D video series on YouTube on January 4, 2009. If you search back through the Wikipedia archives to that time, or, or even a couple of months before, the article doesn't say anything about meteorites then either. In fact, you have to search back to before January 2008 to find this wording. That tells me that Jera is intelligent enough to search the Wikipedia archives for previous versions of articles, and that means he had to have viewed the comments associated with each revision that he pulled. Shortly after this article was brought up in debate, it was promptly changed to The goal of the field trip was to determine whether the experience gained by U.S. scientific and technological community during the exploration of Antarctic wastelands would be useful for manned exploration of space. Debate? There was no debate. Here's what happened. On June 23, 2007, Wiki author Gliss 2, a major contributor to the Von Braun article on Wikipedia, added a description of the expedition to Antarctica. What appears to be a reference note in that article is actually a link to a photo of Von Braun at the South Pole. A picture may prove that at some time he was somewhere where there's snow, but it doesn't tell you what he did there. So on July 1, 2007, after being deemed for not providing a source, Gless 2 added various references to the article, including one for the expedition to Antarctica. He cites an article from Popular Science magazine, dated May 1967. Six months later, on January 2, 2008, an anonymous author, a bright, intelligent young lad from the Netherlands, from the city of Eindhoven, actually, a truth-seeker, someone who doesn't just trust everything he reads on the Internet, 
actually found the edition of Popular Science and read the article. Finding that the article does not mention meteorites or meteorite gathering at all, he then updated the Wikipedia article with the true purpose of the trip, as stated in the source article. And that is why the wording changed. Jarrah knew this. Jarrah had to have seen the revision history when he traipsed through the archives looking for that particular revision of the article that he used in the video. Again, Jarrah builds a straw man, this time suggesting that there was some debate over what wording should be used. Shortly after Webb released this video, I sent him the following private message to complain. I don't normally waste my time writing messages to people of your type, because what I say typically falls on deaf ears. I currently do not have the time to go into all your countless false charges against me that you have propped up in your new series. But for now, I'll just address the two in your latest video. Firstly, you falsely accuse me of tracing through the Wikipedia archives history for revisions. The truth is, I was first made aware of the article in early mid-2007. I screen captured the site as it appeared at the time. Green Magoos was debating on some public forum back then. He was sending me private messages about it. The subject of Von Braun in Antarctica came up on that forum, and he posted a link to the wiki article. That was the debate I was referring to. When I went back to the site a few months later, I found it had been changed. I screen captured it again, and pointed that out in my video. I can assure you that I still have those screen captured bitmap files. They are dated, proving this history. You are welcome to contact Green Magoos yourself to confirm the above. Secondly, I didn't try to character assassinate Werner von Braun. My referral to him as the Nazi rocket scientist who built the Saturn V is simply a passing mention of his history. If I was talking about Ringo Starr, I'd probably refer to him as the Beatles drummer who went on to narrate Thomas the Tank Engine. If I was referring to Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'd probably call him the Austrian bodybuilder and movie star who was elected governor of California. You get the idea. It has nothing to do with poisoning the well, or character assassination, or any kind of logical fallacy that you want to pull out of the air. If you have any regard for truth and honesty, kindly remove your latest upload, and replace it with one that does not accuse me of these false charges. Jarrah White Webb responded to my email, but he didn't remove or amend his video. Instead, he uploaded a follow-up paying mock sympathy, basically implying that I'm too stupid to know how to look through the Wikipedia archives. It's circular. First he accuses me of dishonestly looking through the old wiki archives to cherry pick, and then he flat out calls me stupid for not checking the archives. It's shameless, shameless circular reasoning at its worst. As for what Von Braun was doing in Antarctica, Webb goes on to show us the popular science article he refers to. It's titled, A Spaceman's Look at Antarctica. It was written by Dr. Werner von Braun. I was first made aware of this article some years ago during production of Apollo Zero, a joint project with myself and the lads from moonmovie.com. According to the popular science article that Webb refers to, the official reason for the Antarctica trip was to test scientific equipment. As von Braun states, it may well be smart to test lunar vehicles or surface drills in Antarctica before taking them to the moon. But that makes little sense. What sort of testing could be done there that couldn't be done more easily and cheaply back home in a large purpose-built freezer? Or outdoors in the Alaskan winter? Alaska is much closer to home and it would cost less to export the lunar rovers and other equipment there. And what will be the purpose of Von Braun visiting so many places within Antarctica? After all, they are all cold and covered with ice. So why not just pick the most convenient location and do all your testing there? It seems Webb understands the flaws with these stories, as he goes on to say the real purpose of the trip was some kind of vacation for Von Braun and his buddies. A boondoggle he calls it. <laughs> 